Let's go looking for supernova, asteroids, and other anomalies. Welcome to SETI Astro. Now when searching for asteroids or supernova, most of the time people really go a, a manual method. So, you know, one method would be just taking two of your two of your exposures, doing a quick stretch on them, and then just blinking back and forth, hoping to see something somewhere. Um, this could be very tedious, especially if you have a lot of images to look through. Another method would be using something like blink where we can look through a, a lot of images all at once. And if you're doing this from linear data, be sure to click the apply auto histogram to all images. Otherwise it just copies the STF over from, from the first one. And again, we could we can go ahead and just play through them. Uh, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to just, you know, l look in this particular image and see if you see something right there there's some cloud drifts and and other things that are that are moving through so a while ago i was asked by an astronomy club if i could make a script to help help that and especially with things like supernova where you may be taking uh, an image of the galaxy maybe once a night once every other night once a week and then you're just going to have a database of galaxy images it, it it'd be a nice way to you know automate this a little bit instead of just trying to blink it all. So out on the repository right now under script city astro there's the supernova asteroid hunter. The script is a, a fairly simple interface. You're going to define a reference image and then all your search images. These all need to be star aligned because in the background it's going to do a quick background extraction, stretch them all the same, and then from your reference image, take the search image minus the reference image and, and look for any differences. When it finds differences, it's going to summarize all that, present the image, and put a little box around it so you could see what the anomaly was. It also should automatically exclude large anomalies like satellite streaks, a plane flying over the image, uh, things like that, although some may come in. So perfect images to use in my Supernova Asteroid Hunter are the registered images if you've already ran WBPP because they're all aligned already. The, uh, if you don't have registered image and you're, you're searching a group of, of them, you're gonna to have to take your group of them, whether they were calibrated or cosmetized or whatever, and, and do a star alignment. So they're all star aligned to a particular reference image. So let's go ahead with an example. We'll just jump right in. We'll select a reference image here. I have all these star aligned, so they should all be pretty similar. And then select all your search images. Be sure you're just putting in the uh, actual images if you do star alignment it may generate drizzle data if you had that checked and i'm gonna i'm just gonna put them all in there so here's all our search ones there's a detection threshold amount this is the difference in pixel values between the search image and the reference image for it to trigger uh, it'll also automatically ex exclude like a single pixel. So if it's just like a hot pixel or a, a random pixel of noise, it, it'll exclude those. I recommend between a 0.1 and a 0.2. Um, smaller values, obviously more sensitive as it's gonna take less of a threshold to trigger the anomaly detection. There's two buttons, a pre-process, that's gonna do your automatic background extraction and a stretch. And then after all that's done, then you can go ahead and run the search. So let's just click pre-process images. You can see in the console, it's going to start going through every single image and essentially normalizing them all to the same. So you can actually do an automatic search. After it does all the pre-processing, you'll see it'll say pre-processing complete is that this time you can go ahead and just run the supernova asteroid search. 
And now in the background, it's going to do the automatic subtractions and looking for anomalies. And you're just going to have to let that run through all your images too. Depending on how big your image is and how many of them you have in there, it, you know, you can see it may take a little bit. Okay, when it finishes running, you're going to see a bunch of little windows opened. And then a, a, a summary page is going to be opened as well. So in each image, it's going to tell you where the anomaly was, the number of anomalies, and then you can go ahead and close the script. And each one of these windows, there, there's something. It, fo it found something in it. So what I like doing is just uh, cascading the windows. So cascade fit the images. And then you can see in each one, there's a, a red box around the anomaly it detected. So looking for anomalies. This is a cosmic ray. And you could tell that because it is a sharp dot compared to stars, which actually have kind of fuzz around them and, and some shape. So, you know, that's, that's nothing we were actually looking for. Um, this particular one here, too. So this is a cosmic ray. You can see it, it has sharp edges versus stars, which are more distended. So now that the anomalies are just boxed out for you it's it's really easy to go through the image and go yep nope cosmic ray we'll just close that one we'll look at the next one here oh that 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 might be something um so we'll we'll just pull that one off to the side for now more cosmic rays and the longer exposures you have the more likely it's going to just be just be cosmic rays this is probably, I had my threshold set too low. I did a 0.1. You may want to try it, you know, like a, like a 0.2. This is another cosmic ray. So I'm just going to look through these really quick and uh, see what we got. Now here is a great example. You could tell this thing is a distended object. It is streaked. It's not super bright and sharp like a cosmic ray. And it's in successive images right here's image 46 here's image 49 here's image 45 and now if we just blink between these you could see that this is indeed an object that's definitely worth uh taking note of so now that we know we're kind of looking right in that area yeah here here's another one 42 yep it's just it's just moving along now this one is really interesting. There are a series of them all in a straight line. Dot, 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 dot. And if we blink it with just a, a, another random one, all four of them disappear. And they're not perfectly in a straight line either. Maybe it's a rotating satellite and it's just giving us a flash every once in a while. They're not, they're not streaked though. But whatever this was, was moving across the sky. And not exactly in a, in a straight line. So maybe it's two objects. Kind of moving at, at maybe different speeds. But they, they look like they're relatively similarly spaced between the, the dots and they're offset from one another so this this one is really interesting to me this is this is some truly not not an asteroid or something uh, probably artificial so I'll have to do some more digging on this particular image at the time of night so now with that knowledge these are the ones where we had the the asteroid in it so let's go ahead and just we could pull it up and blink and, and, and check it out and we, we know right where we need to look because they're all highlighted for us in these images. So we could just move the blink screen there. And now let's run blink. And there's our little asteroid moving along. And I could tell I captured it over two different nights. There's a gap in its motion. So it's down here. And then it's up over here. When you are image solving, for things like asteroids, uh, the month, day, and hour are actually really important for getting the correct amphimerous. So a lot of the time, 
if you're doing image solver people don't really have the exact dates and times in there for it but for asteroids in particular you need that but once we do have it image solved we can go ahead and just just run annotate image to check out what that asteroid really is be sure you've loaded all the xeph files to get all the asteroid data from uh, the PixInsight download page. Let's just go ahead and, and render it. And there we go. It is asteroid 584 Semiramis. I have a whole nother video on how to batch, do the solving and labeling uh, to, do, to make things like uh, animated movies and, and GIFs. So be sure to check that out as well. With regards to this uh, weird anomaly, where it looked like it was probably a, a flashing satellite, I did manage to find it. It's right at the right time. It's in my frame. It's the Global Star M029. It's always fun just looking up some of the stuff. Launched in 1999 from Kazakhstan in the Cosmodrome. Well, I hope you guys liked the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe.